We are doing behind the scenes for what's the book called again? I'm not sure. It's got it's the book called. Can we go? Okay, well. So why don't you just go like this with your mouth, and then we'll dub it yeah, with the yeah. actual title afterwards. Life in the bush. Gem Gem's next adventure. <laughs> Action. Well, look, I think the claymation ended up bigger than we could have imagined and more successful, really. So this year we won an award, 2017 Resilience. We came first in our category. Last year we made all the characters and we made the movie. And we wanted to do something that um, extended a different range of skills and took the message further. What is the movie going to be about? It's not a movie. This year we're making a book it's still got the original family from the movie. And there's a new family with a cat called Apricot. So the Apricot family, they're not fire ready. They think they know everything about fires and they don't have to clean up. Captain Jimmy comes and says, oh, there could be a fire. The new family's like, oh, it's kind of serious. The original family helped clean up the new family's house. And then they leave. And then they come back and there's no fire. And then they're friends. If you're going to move to the bush, you've got to be prepared for almost anything that's going to be thrown at you. This year, similar to last year, we got in at the fire trucks and we went in a convoy to the Yen Yen Reservoir. What's happened to the fuel ahead of the flames? Oh, drying out. Drying out and heating. And then that burns fast, doesn't it? Yeah. Yes. Jamie is the fire teacher. Jamie taught us about the whirling hygrometer. That tells you the moisture levels of the air. How we calculate the fire danger rating. The MacArthur meter. The yeah, MacArthur meter. <laughs> <laughs> Measuring instruments. The fire triangle. What kind of fuel starts spot fires? Hot air rises. This gets caught up and they glide long distances. And we went to Bear Hut, what's it called? Bear Castle. And we had a quick look around thinking about if you were trapped in there, you'd get out. And it had no doors. Well, that's a good look if you're making a zombie film. So I don't really know what I'm doing. <laughs> Gonna do that inside, eh? No. <laughs> wow. I made Apricot the cat. I did the little kid. And what did you make? A new car, a fire truck, and a cat scratching post. I made the city background. I created the kangaroo last year, and I updated her a little bit so she's got a new baby in her pouch. I refurbed the mum. I did a shed, a water tank, some logs, a couch. I created the dad from the apricot family. At the time when I was creating him I had a lot of community helpers. We live in a small community but we didn't all know one another and now our kids have these fantastic positive connections with people. They had a lot of different ideas and that helped us, giving us an extra hand. Why do you like community days? Because I can boss people around. I'm very happy to be a slave. Hands get sore. <laughs> The process of taking the photos is you have to have a white backdrop behind the figurine. This is the second scene. Second scene and it's going to say salt. And then we have a vertical cam like a camera facing downwards, looking at a piece of paper. We got a background on the piece of paper and then put all the characters on it. Then we took the photo. But you take more than one so you have an opportunity to choose the best one and then you put it on the page of the book and write a caption. I was talking about the possibility of picture storybook and one of our locals said, have you tried Alison Lester? And I thought, I love her books, but what chance have we got of getting Alison here? You can do get nice effects too just by doing things like this that make everything a little bit accidental. Oh, it's just so nice. 
She showed us a bit of how she um, draws and paints all her pictures in her books. And she did some watercolour paintings for us. A gorgeous dog. They usually have white noses, don't they? <laughs> this is a bit like my dog, Bigsy. The dog that us and the Jews like hidden in the book. It's like, where's Wally? <laughs> and she told us what we needed to do different with our book and what we needed to change. It was brilliant. She was fantastic. We got all our Alison Lester book signed by her. So this whole project has brought together the school and the fire brigade and a huge amount of community members. It's been good. It makes me teary. The learning that goes with a project like this is just enormous. I learned that five lands are essential if you're moving to the bush. No wood stacks near the house. Get all the leaves out of your gutters and get ready for a fire. Our hope for both the claymation and the picture storybook is mostly aimed at families staying safe. Our kids live, work and play, I guess, in, in a high fire risk area and um, many of them will grow up and be adults living in similar areas because it gets in, in your bones, I think. We want people to live out here and enjoy it, but to keep themselves safe. Resilience is resilience that, that leads across into everything that we do. And there's the bell. <laughs> so, what's your name? I am Runal Brad. What's your book about? Just crazy. It's about being happy. <laughs> I've spent my whole life writing it. How long has it taken you to make? 611 years. How old are you? 612. This is another thing I use to scare people. It's great. Is it for children or adults? It's for both. So what are you doing now? Are you actually recording? Yeah, no. You're saying? Yeah, no. He's not telling you no more! He's ashamed of himself! Being famous is harder than it looks. Yeah.